Philosophy of Things World 2016. It's my pleasure to be here with a thought leader and robotics expert, Rodney Brooks from Rethink Robotics. It's great to be here talking. Thanks for being here. In a few moments, you will go on stage and uh, end the day with your keynote and bring some insights linking robots and industrial internet. Could you give us more insight into your keynote topic, IoT on the factory floor? How do we get there from here? I think what we're seeing in, in, with the enthusiasm for IoT in the factory is uh, a lot of very much top-down thinking from a very well-organized set of companies. But there's a lot of factories in the world, most factories in the world, are not as well-planned, well-thought-out, and well-operated as factories here in Germany. And I think it's going to be hard for many of those small factory owners and large factory owners in many countries to see what the advantage would be from the capital cost of introducing Internet of Things all over their factory floor. Often they don't have any networks at all at the moment. They maybe have localized little PLCs, programmable logic controllers, connecting a few devices. But they're really back, you know, many decades behind where European factories have been for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So I think that's hard for them to see what the return on investment to go all the way is. So we have to find ways of helping them get the benefits of Internet of Things through other things which give them immediate payoff and they can see and make sense to them mm -hmm. and then organically grow into the Internet of Things. So which technologies do you foresee emerging to implement um, the industrial Internet? Well, what I've seen here today is people talking about uh, legacy equipment in European factories, they have to find ways to connect to it and they're building special boxes which connect to legacy equipment. But that's going to be a hard sell for what is the immediate value. What is happening throughout the world is a, a shortage of labor, even in China, in Mexico. And people are using uh, collaborative robots uh, in existing factories, factories that don't have networks. Those collaborative robots have powerful processes with them already, and they need to connect to other automation equipment. So there's already a return on, a quick return on investment when you're already buying a robot to have it connect to other equipment, and now you have a little island of IoT. Now you start to merge those together, and then sort of by magic, these small companies throughout the world will have this modern technology, but from a bottom-up approach built around the robots that they all want to buy. Mm. What do you think are the biggest challenges facing the industry? Well, we have so many legacy pieces of equipment with legacy standards. Um, most programmable logic uh, controllers are really based on uh, an abstraction for, from electromagnetic relays, which were what were used in telephone switching systems back in the 1950s and 1960s. That's the basis of the abstraction for the control of most industrial automation. So it's how we gradually add on little pieces to that existing sort of infrastructure to get to a modern era. If you're just starting with a brand new factory in somewhere in Germany, you can have all the technology you want. But in a small country, somewhere else, you have to add to what's there. Hmm. So uh, you think it's going to be robots? Or how else do you think that the well, IoT... I am seeing robots uh, being, being called for all over the world in, 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 in what have traditionally been viewed as very low labor cost uh, countries. Because, frankly, many of those jobs in those factories are horrible jobs. And as soon as people start to get some education on some other opportunities, they don't want to do them anymore. So we see incredible turnover rates in China. Uh, a well-run factory in China will have a turnover rate, a labor turnover, of 15% per month. Now imagine how hard it is to, to keep a factory running when that's your labor turnover. So China is really turning to robots. Mexico is turning to robots. And so we're seeing robots as being the sort of new wave of technology, automation is technology that throughout the, the world. the new evolutionary step towards robots? Yes, yes. and people, people in the West think, oh, robots are taking away jobs, but 
countries that have traditionally low-cost labor want robots because they can't get enough people to do those jobs. Mm -hmm. We in the West sent all our horrible jobs to other countries, and now they don't want to do them either. Okay, yeah, that might be a reasonable solution for it then. But then what do you do with all the people that used to do those jobs? Well, in countries like China, they're they're getting education, they're going to college, they're they're doing service jobs, they're doing um, more cerebral jobs, not just doing the same little task every 12 seconds (laughs) for 10 or 12 hours a day, six days a week. No one likes those jobs. Rethinking robotics, rethinking labor strategics. Day one is almost done. What do you think of the Industry of Things world event so far? I found it very useful to to sit and I almost was late for this interview because I was fascinated by what (laughs) someone was saying. (laughs) I'm learning how so many of the companies are seeing that it's a a, a, a ecological system where different companies have different roles and need to work together. They're not, they may compete with some people but they know they have to cooperate with more people than they compete with. Mm-hmm. Um, and seeing how the people here think about emerging standards and how standards uh, will come about to get everything interconnected. Mm-hmm. What are your expectations for this conference? I came hoping to learn what was going on in the world and I'm certainly learning. Uh, learning what's going on I think in the advanced world. Uh, I think translating that to the vast world is, is going to be an interesting time. And you're finding international audience, I hope, so oh. you can get yes, insights absolutely. into. Uh, I think I think yeah, many many countries here, of course. All right. Well, thank you for answering our questions. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Good. I'm sure I will. Thanks.